Hey church, Pastor Frank here again on a Wednesday. So thankful that you've tuned in. Uh, today I'm going to cover the second of seven lessons that I think are important lessons for us to learn as we get ready to re-engage one another as a church family, as we begin to reopen the building, and as we begin to also come out of COVID-19 and all of the tensions that have been ours over the last several weeks. And today's lesson is learn to be an encourager. You know, the word encouragement uh, is found in God's Word in a number of places, and we think about Barnabas, who was called the son of encouragement. We're going to talk about a couple of these things today. The first is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14. And we urge you, brothers, admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, and be patient with them all. You know, in biblical times, a name meant more than just a distinguishing, you know, a title for someone. A name usually had something to do with its character of the individual being described. And that was the way it was with a man whose real name was Joseph, but who the disciples called Barnabas. The name Barnabas means the son of encouragement. And Barnabas demonstrated encouragement in so many different ways. So today as we think about what it means to encourage the faint-hearted and we think about Barnabas' legacy as the son of encouragement, there are certainly some good lessons that you and I can learn. Barnabas was known for his willingness to seek out those who were struggling and to encourage them in a number of ways. The Apostle Paul was first led to Barnabas when Paul was trying to establish relationships with the early church. And of course, because of Paul's reputation as being the great persecutor of the church, no one wanted to welcome Paul on a Sunday morning to worship. But Barnabas took the risk. He stood up, he stood between Paul and the church, and he was kind of a bridge builder. He, he brought the two of them together. Can you imagine where we would be today if we had not had the writings of the Apostle Paul to guide us and to steer us and help us navigate all the details of the Christian faith? There's also the experience where years later, Paul and John Mark have a disagreement. And Paul says that John Mark is no longer suitable for the ministry with him. And so Paul goes his own way. Barnabas stays with John Mark. He continues to disciple him. He continues to coach him and encourage him. And later in Paul's ministry, Paul would write to Timothy and say, and be sure to bring John Mark with you, for he is valuable to me now in the ministry. Well, again, we see the example of Barnabas, who was the kind of that go-between. He was the encourager. He was the coach. He was the one who saw potential in someone, even if there was a weakness or even if there had been a struggle. And of course, most of us know the story of Barnabas when the church was early in their days and everyone was trying to take care of so many different needs. Barnabas sold a piece of property and brought all of the proceeds and set it down at the disciples' feet so that they could use that for the ministry of encouraging others. And so Barnabas was so generous and that's one of the other characteristics that you see in a genuine encourager. Not only do they make friends for the gospel, not only do they seek to be a bridge builder and bring people uh, into a closer relationship with each other, but they also practice generosity in so many ways. Today, I want to read a couple of other passages for you. In William Barclay's translation of that same verse that we read earlier, he says, we urge you, brothers, warn the lazy, comfort the fearful, 
cling to the weak, and be patient with all. Well, the word that is used for lazy in the original languages really described a soldier who was AWOL, somebody who had abandoned the rest of the troops and gone their own way. And so what Barclay is saying in there is that as a believer, we are to encourage those who might be just about on the edge of falling off uses that idea of faint-heartedness. And we all know that there are people who want to quit and want to give up and may be in danger of doing so, save not a person like you coming along beside them to give them words of encouragement, to pray with them, to, to say to them that they can make it, to, to demonstrate that you see something in their life that God is using, that God is doing. They may have a small soul, as Barclay says in that passage, but you see that with God's hand on their life, their small soul will one day grow and become all that God wants it to be. In every community, there are those people who are faint-hearted, but in every community, there are also encouragers. Be one of those encouragers, won't you? So here's how we wrap this up today. If you're going to learn the lesson of being an encourager, then be there with somebody. Be there to encourage, to support, to, to lift up, to keep someone from falling off the edge, if you will, in their own spiritual journey. Be more generous than you have to be. Uh, that's not only with your tithes and your offerings, but that's when you're tipping at a restaurant because you don't know what that waiter or waitress uh, has been going through and how God might be able to use a generous tip in your experience to open a door of future ministry. And then let me say it this way, you're going to grow up just be sure as you grow up that you don't grow up and become bitter. Grow deeper in Christ. And as you grow deeper in Christ, you're going to be an encourager to someone. You can't help it. It's the way of Christ in us. Well, thanks again for joining us today. I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday.